What is going on guys? My name is Chris Howe and today we are talking about how to turn any single lens, that is right, any single lens into a wide angle lens. Even if you have a wide angle lens, we can turn that into a wider angle lens. This technique is free, it's easy to do, and it could possibly save you a few bucks. So let's jump into it. Woo! All right, so let's say you don't own a wide angle lens or you forgot your wide angle lens at home or you just wanna save a few bucks. Well, here are the things that you're gonna to need to be able to turn any lens into a wide angle lens. Obviously, item number one is a camera and a lens. And number two is Lightroom. That's it, those are the only two items you need to actually complete this. All right, step one, grab your camera, get the exposure that you want of your subject, and then lock the focus. Now step two, you're gonna shoot a vertical or square panorama. Now in most panorama cases, we're very used to going left to right or right to left. That's the traditional panorama, but you can actually shoot other panoramas, and this is actually a technique I just recently learned on my trip to Iceland. You can shoot vertical panoramas, so if you have a tighter lens, you can actually shoot the entire coverage of the area by just shooting all the way up or all the way down. If you want a wider photo, you shoot a square panorama. So for example, you shoot about nine photos. So you go photo one, photo two, photo three, photo four, photo five, photo six, photo seven, photo eight, photo nine. I, I can't even say that. Photo one, photo two, photo three, photo four, photo four. Photo but basically you can shoot as many photos as you want in a square pattern or vertical pattern. Make sure that when you're shooting your photos that there's overlap in between every photo so that the program Lightroom can actually stitch all these images together very nicely. Here's some B-roll on how to shoot a vertical or square panorama. Alright, great. So now you guys have your photos. Let's bring those into Lightroom. Now for this example, I'm going to be using a vertical panorama that I shot when I was last in Iceland. Now import the images that you want into Lightroom and then select the images that you're going to be using for your square or vertical panorama. Now right click on those photos and go to photo merge and then click panorama. Let the computer process its way through it. Now you're going to get a projection of what your panorama looks like. And in most cases it actually might look kind of whack, but that's totally normal and that's okay. Now just click through the different options. We have spherical, cylindrical, or perspective. Now click the option that looks best on your photo. In this case, it's the perspective option. That's the one that looks best on this vertical panorama. So I clicked that, I press auto cropped, and boom, there we go, vertical panorama. Now edit your photo and post it to Instagram and then watch the comments come in where everyone's like, whoa, did you get a wide angle lens? Like Geraldine, are you blowing up these days and getting a ton of jobs? And you're gonna be like, yeah, I am, but you're not really because you just use this technique that makes it look like you have a lot of lenses, but you don't actually have that many lenses. You could have like one lens, but then shoot all the different types of lenses just with this technique. Also, uh, to Geraldine out there, great job. Now, here are some of the benefits to using this technique. Number one is obvious, you don't need as many lenses. Number two, carry less if you're going out on photo missions. Now, in this case, you don't wanna always carry a ton of lenses, especially in my case, I have kind of a sore back sometimes. It's nice to just pare down to the lenses that I actually need and just use this technique if I need a wide angle shot. Number three, your file sizes are much larger. So if you have a 12 megapixel camera, when you stitch a bunch of photos together, it could go to like 20 to 40 to 60 megapixel image, which means it's great for printing. Here are some of the downsides though. It's very time consuming. You have to take more photos. It requires more processing time on your computer and post-production work. Your computer is going to have to work harder to just get your image in resolution. So in terms of like a workflow perspective, it's not that fast. I just want to say a big shout out to my friend Gunnar from Iceland, also known as Icelandic Explorer. When I was last in Iceland, he showed me this technique and he actually uses it for his DSLR and drone. So you can apply it to whatever camera that you're shooting with. Anyways, please go check out his work and support him. I'll link him below. All right guys, so hopefully you learned a little something in this video. If you did, please give it a old big old, give it a old big old, give it a old big old, give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe, would love for you to join along and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out everybody. Here's the hands over lens transition to the end screen. Woo!